Welcome inside the Mass Mutual Center. Once again, I am Pete Sousa, joined by Sam Dosser. The Canton Charge back in town tonight for their eighth appointment of the season with the Springfield Armor. For the Armor, lost to the NBA earlier in the week was Darius Johnson Odom, called up by the 76ers. But down from the NBA, Adonis Thomas and Lorenzo Brown. For the Charge, Shane Edwards is back too, fresh off of a 10-day contract. And also, 7,000 people in the building tonight, Sam, a sellout. First ever sellout in the history of the Springfield Armor. And you mentioned those three guys coming down from the NBA, Adonis Thomas, two 10-day contracts with the Orlando Magic, Lorenzo Brown, 26 games with the Philadelphia 76ers, and Shane Edwards, he had a 10-day contract with the Cleveland Cavaliers, got in two games during his stint with Cleveland. And you know what, Pete, you know what's so great about this night? That's just beginning to scratch the surface of the talent that we have on the floor tonight. When you go inside for the Armor, 74 rebounds combined. Jeff Foote and Willie Reed over the past two nights. That's 67% of the glass that's been cleaned by those two guys. We go back to Thomas. I had a chance to talk with Adonis just moments ago. Pete Sousa pregame with Adonis Thomas. Adonis, fresh off a pair of 10-day contracts with the Orlando Magic. First question, who did you call? Uh, my, when I first found out I got the 10-day, I called my parents. Uh, they were first. They were most excited for me. Uh, they love me. They know how hard I work, and uh, it was a dream come true. And then uh, I let my teammates know. I let my roommate know we were out of town, so I let my, I let everybody know. You walked into the locker room, in the, that NBA locker room, and you saw number eight Thomas hanging in the stall. What did you think? Uh, I mean, it's just a blessing. For, I, I mean, I worked so hard for it, and, and like I said, it's a dream come true. So when you put in so much work, you finally know that it's paying off. You know that you're doing something good, and you're just thankful for everything. Scored your first two points against the Miami Heat. Walk me through that. Um, I mean, I checked into the game. One of my teammates on, on the team that I was really cool with, I, I was familiar with him from AAU basketball. He kicked the ball to me ahead. I had a fast break. Uh, got into the lane, pump fake Rashad Lewis, and, and then I, I got the two points. Who passed you the ball? I was from Deron Lamb. Now, your two points, they gave you the box score. Yeah, they, they laminated the box score for me. Uh, I guess it's a traditional thing for all the rookies. and uh, Everybody was excited for me. They congratulated me after the game and told me welcome to the NBA. Now, I know you're close with Memphis coach Josh Passner, Memphis where you went to school and played basketball. Tonight, they got GW. What are you thinking? Uh, I think this is going to be a great game. Uh, we finally we made it to the tournament. Uh, this is going to be their third straight year uh, with Coach Passner. So, uh, it's just a great thing for them. Uh, I know they're going to play hard. They're going to get it all. They got some tough scenes, and I know they're going to be able to pull out the win. Well, great atmosphere tonight. We already got Willie Reed dancing. 7,000 going to be here. What does it mean to you to play in front of a full house? Uh, it's exciting. Uh, I mean, the NBA, that's, what you, that's night in, night out. So, I mean, when you get a chance to play like that, you want to play even harder. You want the fans to be more excited for the Springfield Armor. And it's going to be a great game tonight. Will not be long before this guy is back up in the league. And right now we're going to throw it to Nate Brown on the concourse for some fandomonium. Thanks, guys. Well, all season long, we've tried testing fans to see what their knowledge is about the Springfield Armor. Today, we thought we'd take a different approach and really see what it's like to be a fan and actually appreciate the armor for what they are and what they stand for. What is the best part of being a Springfield Armor fan? Well, it's close, inexpensive, and we have a good time. If you had to choose only one game or one moment all season long to pick as a favorite, which would it be and why? Well, my favorite moment actually came my favorite game. It was a game against Delaware in mid-January. Uh, Darius Johnson Odom, uh, newly acquired, he uh, threw it on this great dunk that kind of turned around the game for the armor as well as the season. And since that game against Delaware, they've finally got some wins. What is the best part of being a Springfield Armor fan? Getting to come to every game, knowing where I'm going to sit, and just being able to cheer them on. I, we, I really do like that. I wear the scarf and I cheer those guys on because it's just fun. For you as a fan, what has been your most enjoyable aspect of watching this team come together? Uh, the best part is knowing that these guys are, are going to someday be in the NBA and you sit and watch them when they're, they're young and they're, they're still learning the game and then you get to see them in the NBA when they've really refined their game and, and become true superstars. And guys, while the games are all but over here at the Mass Mutual Center for the Springfield Armor, there's still plenty of NBA action to be played at the next level. The Canton Charge have seen one of their own, Shane Edwards, get called up recently, as well as the Springfield Armor's very own Darius Johnson Odom. Let's take a look now at their NBA call-up videos.
With the 34th NBA D-League Gatorade call of the season, the Philadelphia 76ers signed Springfield Armor Guard, Darius Johnson Odom. Step back and look more like it for Darius Johnson Odom. My style is always being aggressive on both ends of the court. Johnson Odom picks up the loose ball and hammers it home on Ante Tecumpo. For me, I think uh, I'm trying to prove on uh, becoming a better point guard. I can score the ball, I'm, I'm aggressive on defense and offense, but they want to see other things, how you can help your teammates become better. Growing up, my dream was to play in the NBA, and I'm going to try to live it out. With the 32nd NBA D-League Gatorade call up of the season, the Cleveland Cavaliers signed Shane Edwards of the NBA D-League's Canton Charge. Edwards is open and knocks it down. Down to the baseline and Edwards, he'll drive on Walker and he'll get there and jam it with the left. Edwards now has it right mid corner. Baseline, Edwards, layup with the right hand is good. Edwards has appeared in 40 games, starting 32 of them for the charge this season, averaging 13 points and over five rebounds per game. The six foot seven, 220 pound forward has scored 15 or more points 15 times on the season. Edwards to Carraza, back to Edwards, and he'll throw it down with one hand on the alley-oop. Thanks a lot, Nate. One guy the fans will not be able to see tonight, Darius Johnson Odom, called up last week by the Philadelphia 76ers. One guy who can be credited with Johnson Odom's call up, head coach Doug Overton. Sam, you had a chance to talk with him just moments ago. Coach, you started the season one and nine, but since then you've really turned it around 18 and 15 since. What's been the biggest key to the improved play for you guys this season? The guys are buying into the system and, and, and really working hard and, and uh, taking it uh, you know a daily approach every day of just getting better and uh, you know and uh, you know we'll just credit the guys for hard work and uh, you know I'm, I'm learning in my first year and, uh, it's, and it's been fun every day and, uh, and, and, and we're getting some results on the court. And you mentioned your first year as a head coach obviously a learning curve when you step onto the sideline and become a head coach what do you think you've learned the most during the course of the season? Well, just, you know, you know, my first time as a head coach, just, you know, uh, game preparation and, um, you know, just preparing, you know, what's going on in the game, game management and different combinations and stuff like that. And and, um, and just finding out my own philosophy, how I want to play, how I want to play defensively and offensively. And, and there's no way, no better way to learn than on the job and, and while you're playing. Now, this year, obviously, the ultimate goal is to win. But in this league, a lot of it is about development. You sent two guys to the NBA this year, Adonis Thomas, Darius Johnson, Odom. How fulfilling to, the, uh, to, the, to you is that as a head coach? Well, it's been great. I mean, we also had Lorenzo Brown, if you want right, to count him right. before the season as well. But, um, you know, it's been great. And, and that's our ultimate goal. It's, that's their goal is to get, get guys, you know, they want to get to the NBA. And our job is to help get them there. And, you know, that's, that's what we set in the beginning of the season. We told them if they work hard every day and, and buy into what we're doing, that, they, they, that, that can happen. And, and it's happened for those guys. And now, right now, you have two guys who are up in the NBA back with you, Lorenzo Brown, Adonis, uh, Adonis Thomas. How does that process work when they come back down? Do they get sent down with a list of things to work on, or do they just kind of come back down and you take it from where you left off? Well, I mean, you know, hopefully they, you know, they had a bit, you know, had a great experience in the NBA, and you know, once you get a taste of it, you know, of course your confidence is going to be higher, and the fact that you had a chance to play in some NBA games, and and so they're going to come back feeling, you know, you know, a lot better. But at least they had a chance and know what they have to work on to to get back. And and then we just pick up where we are, you know, you know, you know, they got some attention now from NBA teams, so they know they can just get better and grow, and and that's what we're going to try to help them do. Now, final stretch of the season, final couple home games over the course of the next couple days. Then you go on the road for five more games. What can we expect out of you guys for this final seven-game stretch of the season? I mean, that's it. And I tell these guys, you know, this is our home push right now. And, uh, you know, we got seven games left. We're, we're not eliminated from the playoffs yet. You know, we can if we can take approach each game and try to get a win and, and, and play as hard as we can, we'll give ourselves a chance. So that's what we're trying to do. I told our guys, you know, they're still playing for the team. They're also playing to better themselves for, for the future. And that's what we want to do. We, we've improved every month this year. And, uh, you know, we're proud of that fact. And, and we want to finish strong. All right. Thanks very much, Coach. That's Springfield Armor head coach, Doug Overton. Coach Overton telling us all we need to know. Coach Overton telling Sam all we need to know. One thing we don't know, some of the behind the scenes stuff around here. Some of the stuff the Armorettes do would surprise a lot of people at home. And Lisa Oxen, an Armorette herself, got the inside scoop. 
You may not know that a lot of preparation goes into the Armorettes dance team. I got the opportunity to give you an inside look at the Armorettes so you get to know the girls a little bit better, see how they prepare for games, and see why they love dancing on the court for the Armor. So here's your all access look at the Armorettes. Hi, my name is Megan Prince. I'm a dancer and I work in customer assistance. Hi, my name is Jessica Fumasoli. I'm a physical education and dance teacher, and after school I coach dance team and color guard. Hi, my name is Paris Nassimdani, and I'm an artistic director at a dance studio. Hi, I'm Lisa Oxen, and I'm an accountant. Hi, my name is Brittany Kerrigan, and I am a mental health counselor. Hi, my name is Lori Hollowell, and I'm a senior undergraduate student at Springfield College. Hi, my name is Lindsay Taylor, and I'm a mechanical engineer. Hi, my name is Lindsay Reisdorf, and I'm a specialty service provider. The girls are super dedicated. They practice twice a week, um, probably a total of eight hours every week. Um, they work super hard. They work together as a team. It's been amazing. The ten girls, they all work really good together. They come up with awesome ideas for new dances and song titles, so it's been great this year. It's very, very exciting to be an armorette. This is actually my third season, and um, with it being my third season, I kind of know the ropes, you know, what goes on. We've had a lot of new additions this season, so it's great combining things I already know to, you know, new surprises. I was a dancer for the last three years, and they asked me to be the coach this year. Um, I love seeing my choreography on court. It's really awesome to see your dances come to life and the girls perform it, so it's been a blast doing that. We perform at every single home game, as well as making public appearances and you know promotional events and charity events. We're in the Armorettes locker room at the Mass Mutual Center. And the Armorettes are getting ready for tonight's game. Ashley, what are you doing to get ready? Hi. I'm eating food and stretching, multitasking. So it's very important to do splits. We do a lot of kicks and leaps and all sorts of stuff that involve our legs. So it's good to get those hip flexors warm and your hamstrings all stretched. Lindsay, can you tell us a little bit about the process of getting ready and doing your makeup? Well, I start by curling my hair and I do my makeup, eyeliner, is it always eyelashes, lipstick. I will touch up my hair and that's about it. Julian, why is it important that everyone's hair looks perfect? We love for the girls' hair to be perfect and curled and big um, for the game so the fans can see it from them being so far away. So a lot of times it's hard for the girls to see the back of their head when they're doing their hair. So I go around and I just do touch-ups so their hair is big and full and curly. Before I stretch, I like to lay out all of my um, outfits that I'm going to be wearing during the games, um, have my lipstick ready and foundation just in case if I have to do any touch-ups. This is how the armor lets get wild. How much have you enjoyed being on the team this year? Um, I've actually loved being on the team this year. I didn't think it would be as much fun as it is, and it's a blast. How do you enjoy interacting with the fans? Oh, I love it, especially when the kids come up and hug you. I am a, definitely a big kid person, so I really enjoy the fans interacting with us. I love being right next to them so I can interact with them by talking to them, pumping them up. A lot of times we have our pom-poms and so we give our pom-poms out to the fans and it just motivates them and it gets them to cheer on and, and have a great time at the games. When you have a whole bunch of fans coming up and saying hi and little kids coming up giving high fives, it just makes your whole day and it gets you ready to dance. It gets you so much more involved in the game and in what you're doing. The fans give us um, a lot more energy, it gives us confidence when there's a lot of fans in the stands, and it allows us to perform at our best ability. I love it, it's fun. I feel like some of the fans definitely now have a connection with us. Having them cheer and look forward to seeing us dancing really amps us all up, especially when we're running out into the court and we see them all smile and yell for us, it's fun. We can hear them on the sidelines cheering us on as well. Um, you know, we'll hear, you know, go Armourettes or, um, you know, they have a lot of good energy for us as well and we really feel their support. You know. What is the best part about being an Armourette for someone who's not on the team that is thinking of being on the team? I have to say the community that you have. We have a community within the Armourettes of all the girls. We're kind of like a little family. We also, I mean, as you know, you're in it. <laughs> Um, we also have a community with our fan base. Um, we go around and talk to all the fans every game. We have a community with the staff, with the guys on the team. Everyone's part of this huge community. It's really nice. So 
as you can see, the Armrests have enjoyed dancing on the court all season long. So even though the season is coming to an end, make sure you try to check out the Armorettes when you get a chance here at the Mass Mutual Center. That was Lisa Oxen, and she was talking about how the Armorettes, how they became a team throughout the course of the season. Now we're going to throw it down to Pete Sousa, and he's going to explain how the Springfield Armor became a unit both on and off the court. It can be said the Springfield Armor began the season as a group of individuals trying to make the NBA. First-year coach Doug Overton saw this reflected in his team's pregame ritual, with each player seated in his locker with headphones on, lost in his own music. In order to change the culture and a 2-12 start, Overton ruled there would be one sound system in the Armor locker room. The result produced the sweet sounds of victory, a late-season playoff push, two call-ups, and one final jam session tonight against the Canton Charge.